Hi everyone, uh, Dr. Ken back again with you with Lesson 5, Part 2 of AC Parallel Circuits. In the first lesson we gave you a quick introduction to what is parallel AC circuits and the use of current phasor diagrams. We're now going to look at parallel resistors and AC. So a parallel resistive AC circuit is treated the same way as for a DC circuit. Of course with resistors there's no phase shift between current and voltage so we can just use the same DC approach. So to summarize that voltage is the same across all the components. That's really to be straightforward it's a parallel circuit. Next current through each branch depends on the resistance of each branch. Again nice Ohm's law. Next, the total current is the sum of all the branch currents. There's that Kirchhoff's law thing again. So the sum of the currents into a node must equal the sum of the currents exiting the mode. Next, total resistance is less than the lowest branch resistance. So when you put resistors in parallel, whatever the smallest resistor is, the total resistance must be smaller than the smallest resistor. And Finally, total power taken by the circuit is simply the sum of each of the powers in the branches. So, nice and straightforward when we've got parallel resistors, we can do nice, simple Ohm's law. We can add values, we can multiply values. They're still complex values, of course, but the phase angle is always zero through a resistor, so that's why we can treat them like it's DC. So here's a little example. So I want you to pause the, the video here. Now, this is example 18.1 out of the textbook, um, and see if you can calculate I1, I2, I3, and then I total. Remembering we have a 480 volt supply at 50 hertz. R1 is 24 ohms. R2 is 60 ohms and R3 is 40 ohms. So have a pause here and when you come back we'll go through it, see how you went. Okay, did you come up with an R total of 12 ohms? It had to be less than 24 because we had to put 24 in parallel with 60 in parallel with 40 and on the next slide I'll go into the math of it a little in a little more detail. Then the currents should have simply been Ohm's law. So I equals V on R, so 480 divided by 24, then 60, then 40 would have given you 20 amps, 8 amps, and 12 amps, giving us a total of 40 amps because we can simply add up the three currents because everything stays in phase, so we can use standard algebra. So what's the phasor diagram look like? So in a parallel circuit, the voltage phasor is the reference phasor because the voltage is common to all the branches. The total current and its phase angle to the voltage is determined from a phasor diagram in which the phases are constructed for each of the branch currents. And finally, in a resistive parallel circuit, all phases are in phase with each other. So here's our phasor diagram. They've actually jumped a step on us. So I'm going to just take us back a little bit and uh, So you can see here the 20 amps, they've topped and tailed straight away up here. 
but the reality is the 8 amps actually comes from the origin here and the 12 amps also I'll just kind of draw it in parallel here the 12 amps also comes from the origin so what they've done is they've just top to tailed them straight away so I'll just label that as 8 amps and this one is 12 there we go so effectively all they've done is pick up the 8 amp and top to tailed it into there then picked up the 12 and top to tailed it into there and they just go on top of each other because the phase angle is zero degrees so um, here phase theta equals zero degrees so having added them together we end up with this bottom phaser down the here so we end up with this one here with our 12 sorry not 12 our 40 amps in total which is simply the 20 plus the 8 plus the 12 giving us a total current of 40 amps all in phase with the applied voltage because it's in parallel so in this phaser diagram it has a phaser for the applied voltage drawn not drawn to scale the voltage doesn't matter and then we have to draw the current phases I1, I2 and I3 they have to be drawn to scale so they can demonstrate the appropriate current so that brings us to the end of uh, section 2 and that was resistors in parallel and just remembering that uh, with resistors everything stays in phase so we can do nice algebraic additions just like we could with DC